Dana. KLVL, Pasadena, Houston, 1480 AM and 95.3 FM. Pearland, Sugarland, Kingwood, Katy, Acres Homes, Third Ward, The Heights, Friedmanstown, Sunnyside, Summerwood, Missouri City, Baytown, Crosby, and surrounding areas. Harvey had strength, but we have power. Hey, this is Tasha Evans, and I love to eat at great restaurants. And more than that, I love great desserts. So does Rashawn McDonald. Check out his new website. That's www.rashawnmcdonald.com. That's R-U-S-H-I-O-N, and McDonald is spelled just like the famous restaurant chain. Guys, Rashawn is looking for great bakers for his baker spotlight. He wants to brag on his fans for their incredible baking skills on his social media and website. That can be your mom, friend, coworker, or relative. Spread the word today. Visit Rashawn McDonald. Dot com. We are now Synergy Radio, powerful talk that inspires change. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the Business Breakfast Talk Show, where we serve you the most important meal of the day. That's right. We are serving success strategies and systems side dishes each Saturday here on Synergy Radio, 1480 AM. So we want you to grab your coffee and your croissant, and let's get down to business. So we're your host, and I am Tiffany A. Washington. And I am Joy Hutton Lacey. And today we are discussing your brand identity. So let's get started. Dive right in. What is a brand? There's a distinct difference, Joy, between a brand branding and brand identity. And so this is what Forbes has to say. Your brand is what your prospect <laughs> thinks of when he or she hears your brand name. It's everything the public thinks and knows about your brand right Absolutely. and it offers both factual and emotional pieces to right. the brand so things that we know about the brand and then also things that people feel as a result of your brand being in the world Absolutely. right so break that down for us a little bit more so you know I think when people think of branding they automatically think logos mm -hmm. but there's actually more to it there are different components to branding you have your actual brand which is the perception of your company right. in the eyes of the public in the eyes of the the world your viewer your consumer and then you have branding which involves the marketing piece uh, the marketing practice of how you actually shape your brand right. uh, and then you have brand identity which is kind of a collection of all the brand elements together that a company creates uh, to portray por portray the right image for the consumer so there are so many different levels to it and so we're going to delve into that today yes yeah, so brand Branding and your brand identity is like the culmination of all three of those pieces that right. you just talked about. <laughs> so there are some very great brands in the world, and there are some <laughs> mediocre brands right. in the world, and there are some downright awful <laughs> yes. brands yes. in the world. Absolutely. But your brand identity includes like your marketing and promotional material, mm -hmm. the way you speak. So right. uh, is my brand known for being very formal, or am I very conversational in nature exactly. and my laid back you know so if you live out in the periscope world or in the Facebook world right. you might find that your brand comes off as a little bit less formal mm -hmm. and more inviting exactly. you know exactly. um, so you want to think about how you connect with your audience through your brand Absolutely. now let's talk about these good and bad brands <laughs> <laughs> and not necessarily brands because we're not going to put right. brands on right. on oh, spot blast. like that, right? <laughs> but we're going <laughs> not going to call anybody out. But I'm going to call yes. out some things that I've seen. Yes, yes. <laughs> so some of the things that really tear me up when I see them, as right. far as brands are concerned, <laughs> are poor images. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Or so, even poor quality images. Yes. It's like, why are you posting blurry photos? Exactly. On your social media. You know, and I get it. People, people, when they're just 
starting out, they're right. really trying to figure out what it is they need to do. Exactly. But we talked about this a little bit last week. When you mm -hmm. don't know how to do something, absolutely, you need to outsource that thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know, because I'm, I'm all about bootstrapping. Right. I'm all about trying to figure out what it is that you need to do. Exactly. But sometimes you have to know when to draw the line in the sand right. and say, hey, I need some help right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I think an important, an important aspect of branding is knowing who your target audience is. We talked about that last week, too, because if you're putting content out there and your audience is 50 and older, but you're on Instagram, mm, that might not be the right platform for you. You may need exactly. to be on fa Facebook. So people really need to put the right content out there um, that's consistent with their brand. You know, that is so important. I'm so glad you said that because Instagram is not for everybody. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> and for instance, if you have like a, a home health care brand. Right. You know, you're in the medical field, but you're dealing with geriatric patients, for yes. example. Mm -hmm. Instagram, they're not you're not gonna find your ideal right. client on Instagram. Right. You probably won't even find them on Facebook. Right. <laughs> right. You, gotta figure out well, you have way. to figure out another way. Because if you're exactly. dealing with geriatric patients and that's who you want to come yes. to your company, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to do probably a little bit more boots on the ground mm -hmm. and you're gonna have to probably go towards television marketing Absolutely. even because they're at home you mm -hmm. know they're home during the day because you know all of those shows they're targeted all of those commercials rather are targeted towards right. certain people exactly. during the day mm -hmm. you know and so you have to think about that in terms of your actual brand absolutely so I want us to talk about how brand identity is compared <laughs> to the way we were perceived in school Ooh. so I need you <laughs> oh, to gosh. start thinking Which school? What, what okay so let's talk <laughs> about no <laughs> you know Brandon starts early yeah Brandon does start early but the good thing is that our brand can evolve over time yes, it can. thank God I'm not the person in <laughs> elementary school that I am now you know so yes. uh, one of the things that I want you to think about though is what people perceived you as mm. and what were you known for in college yeah hmm in college Hmm. I, you know, that's a good question. I would say I was very quiet mm -hmm. um, I, and people knew me for being involved in a lot of community service and just having my hands in everything. You right. know, I wanted to help everybody. I wanted to do everything, but I was also the nerd kind of, but I was mm. a cool nerd. Oh, okay. A cool <laughs> so, nerd. But, you know, like you said, your brand evolves and people tested me in college. Mm. So I had to find a voice. I had to find my voice. And right. so that came... Um, um, that came to be, you know, where people, by the end of college, people were calling me Angela Davis and oh, Sister wow. Soldier. So, okay. yeah, that was a total, <laughs> <laughs> totally different thing. They were like, wait, Joy used to be quiet. What right. happened to the quiet Joy that we, yeah, no, you all brought it out of me. You brought it out of me. <laughs> and so, and the same goes with business, yeah, though. Exactly. You have to bring out those elements that you yeah. want to stand out. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. when we think about brand identity, it's, it's just like thinking about who we want ourselves to be presented right, as to right. the world as well, what individuals. About you, Tiffany? I think you tried to uh, avoid the question. You know what? <laughs> See, you got me. Okay. So in college, yes. I was actually known for my leadership mm -hmm. because I wanted to impact change right. on my campus. Mm -hmm. And so like my freshman year, I really kind of just got my feet wet and tried to inquire about mm -hmm. different opportunities to mm -hmm. lead. But by my sophomore year, I was sophomore class president. Right. And there was a National Council of Negro Women on my campus. Mm -hmm. And I was the president of that. Awesome. I sat on the board with other board members as a student representative. Right. Mm -hmm. So I did all of yeah. those things. Mm -hmm. And I went to an HBCU too. Right. Okay. So for those of you who are listening, an HBCU is a historically black yes. college or university <laughs> and when I went to the HBCU you know one of the things that they do is they dress yes. to go to school yes. right they yes. go to class you know we we're not that jeans branding. and we're not <laughs> sweatshirts right. like a lot of campuses mm -hmm. might be so I was also known for dressing to the night yes okay I have that, clothes that's on pretty, but you've been pretty consistent <laughs> with that yeah so I think I I've held true to that piece through. of the brand yeah I think yeah. so so mm -hmm. Let's that brings us to the brand identity and how mm -hmm. people identify themselves mm -hmm. through their brand. Absolutely. So Steve Urkel. <laughs> I'm gonna take it yes. back to the nineties. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Steve Urkel was known for being intelligent, 
but annoying and clumsy as well. Right. He was a nerd. Yes. Just like you described mm-hmm. yourself. Were you a clumsy nerd? Um. Okay, so <laughs> with no comment. This morning. <laughs> yes. Joy Maybe, Waste. Yes. yes. Still, still <laughs> yes. Look clumsy. Oh, my goodness. All right. So just a little bit accident prone, Joy. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's okay. We still love you. You know. So <laughs> we, know, we know Steve Urkel is that person. But then there was also... Right. Stefan Urkel. Right. Stefan Urkel, Urkel was smart. <laughs> yes. He was debonair. And he was somewhat of a ladies man. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to be with this fictional character. Exactly. Including the viewers. Mm-hmm. You know, when they started to revamp their show and uh, revitalize Steve Urkel, right, or Jaleel White as we mm-hmm. know him, his real name. Mm-hmm. Then people were all over that, right? Yeah. And so that is brand <laughs> identity. How do people identify you inside of this world? Exactly. And then we also have Coca Cola, right? Which people definitely recognize this brand, right? People uh, recognize Coca Cola for all of its different products. Mm-hmm. And there were some products that I didn't even know that they made. Right. So uh, just for our listeners out there, there is a cadre of products like Sprite, Fanta, Dasani, Minute Maid, Powerade, and Simply, the Simply Lemonade, yes, Simply Orange. I did not know that was Coca-Cola, yeah, right? Yeah. And so they also have Smart Water and Honest Tea. Right. These are some of their newer right. brands. Well, with that, a strong part of Coca-Cola's identity is that people relate to their product through what they present to the world. Absolutely. So one of the thing, one of the reasons why we know that their branding is so strong is because we're able to call Coca-Cola by its short name. Yes. I need a coat. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, right. I need to calm my nerves. I got. I right. need a coat. <laughs> right. <laughs> And we remember that song that they used to play, Always Coca Cola. Always, yes. With Tyrese Gibson. That's the way I remember it. (laughs) So, yeah, go ahead. But we are going to cover more of that brand identity when we get back. It's getting good. Oh my gosh. All right. So, we'll be (laughs) right back. All right. (laughs) In the past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home. And we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24-7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you go. That's where you go. With transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Got to have you here on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. This is Rashawn McDonald. Welcome to The Journey with Tiffany Smith. Hello, my name is Les Brown. I'm Paris Ely. We're your hosts, Tristan and Cece. This is Oscar Hines. Hey, it's Zakia Larry Live. This is Nicole R. Coleman. Hey, and I'm Tasha Evans. This is the reality check, Dr. Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Welcome back to the show. I'd like to shout out our live studio audience once again. Tune in every day, 1480 AM. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Tune in to Synergy Radio 1480 in your car, in your house, or on any mobile device at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Carlos Correa, and my heart goes out to our city of Houston.
Titans.com. And now, back to the show. And we are back. So we know Tiffany got a little excited about Coca-Cola. Yes. But I do want to continue the conversation on how strong a brand can become because there are things that you immediately associate with a brand, such as the logo, the color, the slogan. Right. You know, and before we went to break, you know, I was saying the co- the song, you know, always Coca-Cola. Right. You know, you remember things like that when people have jingles, when people have uh, different slogans. You know, there there are so many things that make a brand recognizable. So I know you you um, were talking about Coca-Cola, but talk talk about the things that that make a, a brand really strong and why why those things are so important. So brands job the job of the brand is mm-hmm. to be able to connect with the audience because right. if you don't have that audience connection then you don't have a strong brand mm-hmm. and so one of the things coca-cola has been successful at is a continuity of their brand and Absolutely. it started with their colors so we know the original coke product is red mm-hmm. so there is science behind all of these Colors, colors that we choose absolutely. for our logos. So with Coca-Cola, for example, we know that red is the main color with absolutely. hints of white. Mm-hmm. So this color is reflected in their commercials, and we'll notice that all of their commercials are loud, youthful, or exciting. Mm-hmm. And all of these elements are also associated with that color right. because that's what right. red means. Red means loud, you, youthful, exciting. And you know, red can also be considered to be a sexy color. Right. But we also know that that color draws mm-hmm. in a certain group of people. Yes, you absolutely. Know? And since Coca-Cola has been around <laughs> for years, mm-hmm. these Coca-Cola fans They've been fans. Oh, yeah. Since, because my mom <laughs> right. is a Coke drinker. Right. And she's a baby boomer. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. she still drinks Coke. Yeah. And I was on Dr. Pepper for a minute. Right. But I, I, I switched on over to Coke because, <laughs> yeah. you know, I just saw my mom drinking right. it all the time. Now you know you're going to have people drink, want to go, go get a Coke. Yeah. After this Do show, y'all right? want a Coke this morning? How many people drink soda this early in the morning? <laughs> But it's also the same thing with Sprite, Joy. So the Sprite brand is also a subsidiary of Coca-Cola. And their color is green. And we know that green is associated with money. And it's also associated with nature. But what what is one of the things that you see when you see a Sprite commercial these days? Superstars. Yes. You see superstars. Yes. And one of those superstars is LeBron James, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so LeBron James is wealthy. He <laughs> is powerful. So that brand consistency, right. it does start with that logo and the colors that you choose are so important exactly. because it ties everything together. Mm-hmm. And then when they actually do the commercial, what are they wearing? They're wearing stuff with green in it, yes, right? Absolutely. Or, you know, when they do the Coca Cola commercial, they're wearing those appropriate right. brand colors. Right. So when you think of brand identity, Think about what you want your logo to be right. and if it is in sync, yeah. if you will, with what you want. Yeah, and I think what's funny is we're both kind of actually wearing our brand colors. You know what? <laughs> we are. We're That's wearing our brand colors today. And so I have on black and white, but then my my Joy of Consulting cup here has yes. yellow. You uh-huh. see I plugged that Joy yes. of Consulting. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. But yellow, um, you know, yellow is the color of sunshine, Mm -hmm. happiness, you know, of course, my name is Joy, so that's perfect. And, you know, when people see it, it it just means, you know, I'm looking at a cheerful vibe. Right. Whereas black and white, you know, black in particular, it's more of a modern, sophisticated feel to your brand. And so, you know, so it kind of balances each other out because especially with my personality, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm not always on, you know, in terms of the yellow, but then there's the the modern modern, sophisticated part of me that that is important to my brand. And then you're wearing purple, so what does that what does that mean? So purple is the color of royalty. <laughs> and one of the things that's Ooh. associated with royalty <laughs> is luxury. So okay. if you want a luxurious <laughs> feel in your brand, then purple is the yes. way to go. Okay. And so I also have hints of gold, which right. also flow in that same vein. Right. So Absolutely. the the 
the thing about being royal <laughs> and knowing that we have a certain way that we want to walk when we're yes. on this earth, mm -hmm. a certain way we want to present ourselves, right. that's all that I wanted my brand to be. Yes. And I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that people felt that when Absolutely. they saw me, when they heard me, mm -hmm. when they see my website, all of that. Mm -hmm. So that brand consistency. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so tell us about a couple of other colors because I know that our listeners probably want to know a little bit more about do I have the right colors? Do right. I need to possibly rebrand? Right. Uh, I want people to be able to think about right. what their colors actually mean if they didn't get a consultation about this on exactly. the front end. Yeah. So let's see, we have blue, um, mm -hmm. and blue is pretty universal. It's a universal color across the uh, spectrum. And blue makes your brand appear more trustworthy, uh, more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are looking to appeal to a wide demographic, then, you know, go with blue. Right. Um, pink. Yes. There's pink. Mm -hmm. um, pink is usually tied to feminine, femininity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if your brand is targeted towards women, then it's appropriate to use pink. But you should definitely uh, consider that when, if you if you want to target to both men and women, how that, how that comes off. Right, yeah, because we see pink a lot yes. for women. Mm -hmm. But I think that women can be <laughs> bold in so many other ways. Absolutely. So don't, Absolutely. E also think about what the market is doing. So right. if there's already a lot of pink out there, there are a lot of all of the colors. Mm -hmm. But there are some lesser used colors that yes. also can promote some of the things that you want, like right. orange, for example. Tell right. us a little bit about that orange color. What is orange, Tiffany? I think I orange. Know. I, I think orange brown, has to do orange. with. Orange has to do a lot with that happiness vibe as well. Energy. It's bright energy, okay. light feeling. Okay. Yeah, so when you think about orange, one of the things is high energy, and it's great if you want to be friendly yes. or playful, if that's mm -hmm. the way you want to appear to your audience. And, and it definitely stands out. It stands out, you know, and so it's complementary <laughs> to that red color. So if right. you don't want to be quite as bold as the red, mm -hmm. orange might be a good, yeah. a good way to go. I think one other color, uh, oh, I was saying brown, is yeah. is another one because you know you don't really think about brown when you're talking about branding but a lot of people actually do use it in their logos and mm -hmm. you know it's probably the least uh, color you'll see in in branding just because it's not as popular however um, that can work to your advantage uh, and anytime you do see something different that's right. not commonly used it makes you stand out even more but it's more masculine and it has a more rugged industrial feel when you use brown. I mean, yeah. like think of coffee, for example. Mm -hmm. It's very subdued, you know, and so you see colors when coffee is used in, right. in branding sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. It's more, it's it's just more masculine and a structured uh, right. type of feel to it. And so you'll want to see how these colors can combine Absolutely. to create the type of look and feel that you want. So your logo doesn't have to be all brown or right. all orange, but if you want a hint of ruggedness, with a mm -hmm. hint of high energy, then you might do orange and brown right. as your colors, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and if mm -hmm. you use the wrong colors, that can be a turnoff to your tar target audience. Right, And exactly. so that's kind of a good segue into what some common mistakes are in branding. Yeah, I think so too. So when it comes to branding, it's not uncommon for companies, companies to make mistakes <laughs> right. when they are trying to get into their branding efforts. Mm -hmm. And a few of those mistakes include inconsistency, lack of internal training, and lack of updating your marketing materials. Absolutely. And so we always like to tap into our resources. So the, a bit of this information comes from Forbes. So when we talk about inconsistency, that means that you're not doing the same things the right way mm -hmm. on the a regular basis, right. whether right. that regular is once a month mm -hmm. or rather, whether it's daily, mm -hmm. you have to be consistent. Whenever right. you say you're going to show up, then you need to show up because that's Absolutely. a part of your brand. Absolutely. And if you can't show up, then there needs to be something that's said about it. You can't just disappear <laughs> and <Right>. then <laughs> not say anything <laughs> to your audience because yeah. if they're expecting us Exactly. to be here for the Business Breakfast right. Talk Show every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Right. Then we need to be here. Exactly. <laughs> That's what we have to deliver, right? right? Exactly. Rain or shine, sleet or snow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where's Tiffany and Joy? Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. So 
Absolutely, because some people have different colors on their website. Their business card looks different. The the logo is not matching the logo on the website. You know, the logo may yeah. be different on the cards, and it's, it's it just looks very disconnected. Mm -hmm. It looks very unorganized too. Right. And like you said, that brand consistency is just not there, and you're just sending the wrong message to your to your consumers. Right. So if you have five different businesses, mm -hmm. which is fine, mm -hmm. then whatever business you're going to be a representative. <laughs> of right. then make sure that that's the part that's on for the day Absolutely. so if I'm going to a networking event for example mm -hmm. and I want to market one business mm -hmm. I can't have a I can't say that <laughs> oh my business is transformation seven but then have a joy of consulting uh, called five business yeah <laughs> am I I mean don't give me, and first of all, I don't want five <laughs> right. different business cards. Oh, here's my business card for this. Right. Oh, and if you need yes. your hair done, yes. you can get this. It's like, no, no, it's too much. Stop. Just, stop. <laughs> Just one. How about you catch me on another day <laughs> right. and give me that and hair give business me the, card? Exactly. Like, that's too much. It's I, too yeah, much. I hate when people do that. <laughs> so when doing that brand consistency, um, what does that look like in terms of training your employees in the in the workplace on on keeping that brand consistent? You know, because we mentioned mm -hmm. messaging earlier. Um, your your materials. So what what does that look like for you, for example? For example, in Transformation 7, one of the things that I try to make sure anybody who's associated with my brand, whether they be a volunteer or mm -hmm. somebody that I've employed for a particular mm -hmm. event, they need to know what the mission and values and goals are Absolutely. of the business. And once they know that, then they'll also know, okay, so this is how we present ourselves when mm -hmm. we're in public. Right. And this is what it looks like. And these are the shirts that you're going to wear, by the way, yes. while we're, right. we're here, you know. <laughs> So you're going to have on some branded material. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to know how to speak the Transformation 7 language. Yes. And you are going to be able to represent in the fashion that is acceptable for mm -hmm. T7. So it's really mm -hmm. about education right. in the workplace. Right. You know, um, it's just like a sorority even. Right. Um, so for my sorority, shout out to Delta Sigma Theta. Um, <laughs> For my sorority, we, we can't wear our letters when yes. we are doing certain things, right? I was just thinking that. You know, and there mm -hmm. are other times when we can wear our letters. So right. you have to be sure that, and they teach us that. Yes. You know, during our process, these are the things that we discuss. It's like mm -hmm. you can do this, but you cannot do this. Right. And if you do not if you do do this, you will be in X amount of trouble. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? Right. And so you get reprimanded in some kind of way because that's the way you protect right. your brand by educating. Exactly. Yeah. You know, a prime example of that is if I see an employee wearing a restaurant's um, staff shirt, for example, mm -hmm. and you're out there doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. that's a problem because you're representing that brand. Exactly. You know, you're representing that restaurant and you're out here acting a fool. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's good. Um, so what are some marking materials that would be associated with branding? I know, you know, I automatically think of business cards or website, letterhead, what what are some other creative things that you can do with uh, marketing materials? One of my favorite things to do with marketing mm -hmm. materials is create video. Okay. Yeah, I really love <laughs> video because one, it's a high conversion tool. Right. You know, so whenever you use video, either live or something that's already pre-recorded, mm -hmm. it gets more attention than just a still picture <laughs> right. or just a graphic. So one of the things that you want to think about when you are branding yourself is how can you incorporate video into some of the things that you're trying to do Absolutely. and get that video out to the right market mm -hmm. and the right pairs of eyes. Okay, yeah. great, great. So we're going to talk more about branding yes. uh, because we have a live in-studio guest, Amira Sane with Brunch and Slay. Yes. And it's a wildly popular brand. Uh, she has uh, taken over Houston, Dallas, Austin, and she is going to help us uh, slay our brand yes. and talk more about what that looks like because a lot of people um, have misconceptions about branding and so how do you make your brand stand out? Yes, she's a marketing maven, if you will. Yeah. I'll just I'll just coin her as that. So get ready to join us on the conversation and what aspects of branding do you struggle with? Go ahead and, and put that in the comments if you're watching with us uh, through our live stream or you can give us a call here at KLVL at 832-230 5592 and if you are live streaming with us again go ahead and place those comments inside yes. of the comment box and we will be right back with Amira saying all right <laughs> Thank you.
You're listening to KLVL 1480. It's radio at the next level. Hi, this is LaShonda Gary with Dream Build Success. I'd like to invite you to join us on November 4th in Houston, Texas at the one and only Shift Conference. It's the perfect conference for entrepreneurs who desire to shift in the marketplace, ministry, mindset, and money. You will experience and discover your success shift with transformational coaches, speakers, and expert panelists. Prepare for a day of purpose, motivation, vendor shopping, explosion, and networking. Get ready to shift. Grab your ticket today at dreambillsuccess.com. Sponsored by Synergy Radio. Your greatest wealth is health. This health capsule is brought to you by Arango Chiropractic Clinic. The nervous system controls the function of every cell in our body. And as such, it controls every aspect of our lives. This is why maintaining a properly functioning nervous system is essential to a normal, healthy life. Because of its focus on the nervous system, chiropractic care can be a very important part of a wellness lifestyle. By restoring the integrity of the spine and nervous system with a safe and natural method of care, your doctor of chiropractic can help you live a more healthy, productive, and happy life. For the health of it, visit us at 1302 North Shepherd in the Heights or visit our website, HoustonChiroClinic.com or call us at 713-868-6166. 713-868-6166. Listen to exciting Prairie View a and football games right here on Synergy Radio 1480 AM. Saturday, the Panthers open swag play on the road taking on the Alabama State Hornets. Tune in right here for all the action, starting with the pregame show at 6.30 p.m., followed by kickoff at 7. Prairie View and m Athletic, all out, all game, all season. And now, back to the show. I'll be back. All right, we are back. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us at the Business Breakfast Talk Show, where we serve you your most important meal of the day. If you're just joining us, we're discussing brand identity. And with that brand identity, we've just laid the foundation for you, and now we're going to amplify that message with the lovely Miss Amira Sane of Brunch and Slay. She has a lifestyle <laughs> brand, and she has some swanky events that create yes. lasting memories. As, to, as our Instagram tagline states, Brunch and Slay creates experiences you love, connections you crave, and content to inspire. Oh, Welcome, hi. Amira. Yay. Thank you so much for being in the studio. Thanks for having me. I am already enjoying myself. You ladies are hilarious. <laughs> We thank gotta, you. We got to be yeah. funny. It's just, you know, early in the morning. We yeah, have to keep keep it going. Yes. Yeah. Thank you absolutely. so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> so, Amira, fill in that introduction with a little bit about who you are and what your brand stands for. And I know you have an interesting story about how Brunch and Slay came about. So just give us all of the juicy details. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who am I? Uh, I am a, j- Jack of all, a Jane of all trades. All right. Uh, but I've definitely evolved. I've, this is, I like to say, probably my fifth or sixth career <laughs> uh, brunch and slay came about it's something i kind of always wanted i'm definitely an entertainer that's just something i love seeing people smile i love connecting people yeah. uh, and giving them you know just really if i see somebody thrives in a certain area i love putting with them with someone else who's going to help them become and blossom mm-hmm. to something else right so uh creating events has been something i've always done even for myself like i threw my first party in the fourth grade and that was for my teacher what he was turning 30 and we threw him this huge surprise party <laughs> wow so, yeah like i've just it's just in me yeah. um, and brunch and slay came about because i was working in corporate america mm-hmm. and i was six months pregnant i got downsized laid off whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. they did me a huge favor and uh at that time i'd been relocated a few times for work and every time i go to a new city i just kept finding it more and more difficult to connect with and find my tribe that's what I always call it yeah. uh, find my tribe and as you get older you just kind of evolve yes I'm in a sorority and I'm you know a professional woman mm-hmm. but you know there's just different chapters in your life and you're looking for that groove and so my husband said why don't you just take this time and create what you've always been talking about right. figure out what you want to do for women so I took his advice and I just got really quiet and uh, 
just started listening to myself and listening to God and, and just asking questions. And then I thought, well, I'll, I'll do a brunch because I love to brunch, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, brunching is when I get with my girlfriends right. and we just kind of kiki about our week and, or what happened <laughs> yeah. last night and we lift one another up. And then after I leave brunch, I'm always feeling like I can do this. So yeah. I slay. So mm-hmm. that's where the name right. came from. Mm-hmm. When you brunch, we come yeah. together and then we slay the world together mm-hmm. because yes. we are filled up. Right. And that's how it started. I love that. Yeah. So yeah. you have something specific that you do within your brand for that sleigh portion. So we obviously all know about brunching, right. but what are some of the things that you help your audience to slay with inside of their life? Honestly, my platform is, uh, it originally is self, health, and wealth. Mm-hmm. And basically what that means is we're going to live our best life. Yeah, so absolutely. if you're going to be on team in my, and in my tribe, team brunch and sleigh, then you are dedicated and you are ready to live the best life you can possibly live. Uh, and that's really anything I create, whether it's content or it's actually an event, it's geared around lifting one another up in a fabulous and fun way. Mm-hmm. But really, it's all about living your best life and being healthy and in every aspect of that. Right. Okay. Love so that. you kind of just took us right through the piece <laughs> of our notes that we were going to talk about, which is your mission, your values, and your brand personality. <laughs> right. So you kind of summed all of that up without even having to say it. So we know right. what your mission is or your why, and we know what some of your beliefs are as far as your company is concerned. But how would you really describe your brand personality oh my brand is the chick who you want to know huh. mm, okay like she's that. the person who you see um, and you're like how does she do it um, but she's she's vulnerable too so mm-hmm. she'll tell you I'm not all there mm-hmm. um, but I'm working on it and in some areas she's thriving and in some areas she's not and that's why she has her tribe that right. she can lean on in those other right. areas but that's what my brand is it's really an evolution yeah, yeah, I love that. So if you could describe your brand in three words, what would those three words be? <laughs> uh, that's a, that, that, You got me on that one. Uh, let's see. Um, it definitely has to be approachable. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I want to say excellent because I want to I practice that and, and what we do. And fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, I think that element is so important. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our brands that mm-hmm. we forget to have fun with it. Yeah. And if you can't have at least one or two events a year within your brand where you're having fun, yeah. right. then I think you need to reevaluate why you got into business. Absolutely. Right. Are, are you going to lose people? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. That's the big thing. Like, yeah. You want to be attractive. Yeah, because yeah. even the biggest brand, they have their parties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do they? Yeah, yes. they, have their they definitely have those parties. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. looking at the image of your brand, Amira, how, do you, how would you say it's evolved over time? Oh, it evolves every day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when I first started, I didn't know a lot about I knew who my target audience was or who I wanted that audience to be, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I did know a lot about social media. That was something I literally, it was almost like, I I say it was my version of B-School, my bootleg B-School. I (laughs) dove into everything, finding out as much as I could about the platforms, about how to market, and I used my background of, because before in my other life I was in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. So I used that information and kind of create adapted it a little bit with what I learned and created, you know, this image Mm -hmm. of what I wanted it to be. But, yeah, I didn't know a lot about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about, you know, the ideal customer. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to think about an avatar. Mm -hmm. And I know we talk about avatars in the world of business quite a bit, but what would you say your particular brand avatar is? Oh, my avatar, like I said, she is that chick you want to be. Yeah. Um, I literally spend a lot of time on that. Mm-hmm. I think that is a, a huge credit to how Brunch and Slay is, uh, I guess, people are attracted to it. Mm-hmm. I thought about what I was looking for. Um, she is a smart person. She's fun. She's a traveler. She's evolved. She can, she can have kids. She cannot have kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's definitely a person who gives herself time. So she puts herself first in all ways. Right. Yeah, and that's important. So with the avatar, I know that I've I've been with you on a panel just last week, mm-hmm. actually, and you talked a little bit about what she reads, what oh, yeah. she eats, you mm-hmm. know. So <laughs> how important is it to know those things? Oh, if you want to be successful, it's very important. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just as important as going down and getting that DBA, opening that first mm-hmm. business bank account. It's, as a matter of fact, it's more important because you can't do any of those things if you don't know who your target audience is. Right. So, uh, 
it, it's that important. People think it's crazy to go in that in detail. No, I have like pages and pages about her, like where she likes to vacate, mm-hmm. where does she walk? If she's reading a book, is it a, a digital book, an ebook, or does mm-hmm. she like to turn real pages? Right. That's a difference. Yeah, that right. lets you know where to market. If yeah. she, yeah, so it makes a difference. Yeah, right. you and know. for those listening, an avatar, we're not talking about the bitmojis or uh, cartoon characters. Right. Here. <laughs> uh, we're talking about your customer persona, if you will, your target audience what that looks like and you really have to identify who that is because that helps you shape your oh, your your branding it helps you shape the content that you put out so yeah i just wanted to clarify yeah. that because people are like what is it and she's evolving and you <laughs> right. have to you can't just do it once at the beginning of your business and then leave her alone or exactly. leave him alone or whoever mm-hmm. that person is you mm-hmm. have to constantly revisit as new things come out as new platforms right. come out which she right. even uh you be a user of this platform Absolutely. like you guys were talking about earlier mm-hmm. uh you know know your audience and know which audience that platform attracts right so uh that's very important that's a huge part of marketing yeah so in that vein of marketing let's talk a little bit about websites mm-hmm. do you think it's important for people to have a website early on uh yeah okay. <laughs> you know it's 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 uh different for different people i've yeah. i've started to see you mm-hmm. know some people think that you don't have to start a successful business with the website but to me it makes you legit what it, are your exactly. thoughts about it? i have to agree yeah. um I, I know that a lot of times because people are intimidated by technology they tend to run from it or because of our budgets everybody who starts a business for the most part, unless you have a trust fund, uh, is on a shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have free website like Wix or Squarespace and, Mm -hmm. you know, not trying to plug them, but those are are resources that you should use. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a detailed website. It could be a landing page, which is basically just like one screen with your URL, which is that www part of um, your domain, uh, and you just have a calling card because there's nothing... uh, less professional than giving somebody a card or pitching your business and when they say okay what's your website and they try to google you and it's nothing or it's a domain you bought three years ago that's been revoked yeah so (laughs) that's your calling card and that's the first step to get legitimate yeah Mm -hmm. i definitely agree so when you think about websites now let's talk about your website in particular now i know that it is very detailed and very geared towards uh lifestyle Mm -hmm. you know so what are some of the things that you did initially in your website that you felt like you wanted to change and that you're you're moving forward with that. Oh yeah, this is my third that's my third one by the way. Yeah, okay. And so, I have a new one yeah. coming out like in a couple weeks. Uh, because yes. I'm constantly evolving. Yeah, like when you, my first one honestly it came from Fiverr. I don't know if you I'm a big yes, fan of Fiverr. Yes. I had like I said once again no right, budget right, and I'm not a techie. So I said okay, let me hire somebody from Fiverr to right. do the basics so I can put that energy someplace else. Mm-hmm. Did that and then all of a sudden, I started working with brands that I realized my bootleg fiber <laughs> website was just not going to track what I needed. So right. I invested in a in a better website. Yeah. Uh, and I knew that I had to give people lots of topics. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one thing in your business. A lot of people think, okay, I'm a plumber. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. I plumb, or you know, I don't know if that's even a word, but. That's what I do. But when you're trying to build a brand, you have to have, I say, uh, there's a lot of touch points. You have to give people something almost every day. So on my website, I'm giving you information about experiences. You get to look at, if you've never heard of it, they're like, okay, so she throws parties, you know, what's going on? (laughs) So you can go there and say, oh, it's more than parties. It's actually an experience. So Mm -hmm. I have the video, like Mm -hmm. you talked about. That's a huge thing. So then I have topics of articles or blogs, people Mm -hmm. call them, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you have to have major touch points because everybody doesn't want to come out be social maybe they want to listen to the podcast maybe they want to watch a video Mm -hmm. or maybe they want to read an article about something that moved me Um, so I have to have basically have that and make it easily accessible and still Mm -hmm. make it look professional right right so with brunch and slay you know how did you we talked about colors earlier so Mm -hmm. what do your brand colors say about you (laughs) Uh, they definitely say that I'm strong because blue is one of them Um, Mm -hmm. yeah I'm tough and I'm a no-nonsense girl uh, but I'm also warm and fuzzy I'm pink (laughs) Uh, So I definitely wanted to put that out there because it's, it's something people can identify with. It is attractive. It's mm-hmm. on it's on trend. Yeah. Uh, that was a huge part. I've changed the shade of pink since, mm-hmm. um, but definitely I definitely knew who I wanted and she loves right. blue and pink. Good. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, we are getting ready to transition on yes. out into our break, but we are having a great time here yes. with Amira Sane. <laughs> so invite one of your breakfast friends and come on over and join the conversation and 
tell us what aspects of branding that you're currently struggling with. Give us a call here at 832-230-5592 or if you're live streaming with us on Facebook at Synergy Radio Network, drop us your questions there and we'll answer them during the show. We'll be right back. In the past year, KYND became one of the fastest growing radio stations in the country. Well, we've outgrown our old home and we're ready to take it to the next level. We are now Synergy Radio. More power. All day, all night. Wait, what? Synergy Radio 1480, powered 24 7. Can I tell you how excited we are? We are powerful talk that inspires change. That's where you go. That's where you go. With transformational coaches ready to help you get to the next level. You will find some things that speak to your soul. Synergy Radio 1480 will continue to bring you all the voices you know and love. Got to have you here on the Yolanda Adams Morning Show. This is Rashawn McDonald. Welcome to The Journey with Tiffany Smith. Hello, my name is Les Brown. I'm Paris Ely. We're your hosts, Tristan and Cece. This is Oscar Hines. Hey, it's Zakia Larry Live. This is Nicole R. Coleman. Hey, and I'm Tasha Evans. This is the reality check, Dr. Dr. D. Yvonne Young. Welcome back to the show. I'd like to shout out our live studio audience once again. <laughs> Tune in every day, 1480 AM. Are you ready for talk that inspires change? Tune in to Synergy Radio 1480 in your car, in your house, or on any mobile device at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. AM and 95.3 FM. Pearland, Sugarland, Kingwood, Katy, Acres Homes, Third Ward, The Heights, Friedmanstown, Sunnyside, Summerwood, Missouri City, Baytown, Crosby, and surrounding areas. Harvey had strength, but we have. And now, back to the... Good morning, and we are back with your business breakfast talk show. We have Amira Sane of Brunch and Slay in the building. We are so excited. And if you have not been listening, you need to go back and replay this. Uh, You can also share this video on Facebook Live through Synergy Radio Network. And tune in next week because we will have some giveaways here in our studio. Yes, can't wait for the giveaways. So before our break, we were talking to Amira about the marketing piece of your or of your business and so we want to get into that we're going to talk about a few things um, you know how do you solicit feedback for your brand you know and some people use surveys but what what works for you um, I definitely use surveys and if I have an event like especially if it's a longer event I create actually little note cards um, mm-hmm. one of the really cool things and I'll definitely share this nugget uh, is I have a card that I'll say describe this experience in three words mm-hmm. um, that's something that I not only use to figure out what they're feeling but I use it to find hashtags yeah. so that's a great way to lift your brand if people are saying amazing amazing then you find hashtags 
to go with amazing. Mm-hmm. So when people are looking for that, they can find your brand. Yes. So you have to constantly be thinking of ways to crop market and be uh, use tactics that are going to help you in more than one area. Yeah. Yeah. That's a golden nugget right there. Yeah. So uh, Amira just gave us uh, a key, a golden yes. key yes. on how <laughs> to uh, use hashtags in order right. to help people to find you. And so that's actually another show yes. that we should, <laughs> right. we should right. I mean, social yes. media social by media. itself. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's its own beast. Exactly. So I like the way you get feedback about your brand. Mm-hmm. And that's so important when, when we get those touch points with people because mm-hmm. Oftentimes, that's a missed opportunity for a lot of folks. And you don't know what to fix if you don't ask. Yeah, and you have to ask. And you cannot be... in your feelings about it and you have mm-hmm. to or you won't grow exactly. being stubborn is not going to take you right to the poorhouse right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. exactly yeah. so you talked about blogging a little bit earlier too mm-hmm. and i wanted to touch on that a little bit because there is this notion that blogging is dead mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay who, that, these <laughs> who speaks of such who these people you <laughs> speak of <laughs> Right. So tell us a little bit about <laughs> blogging has enhanced your your website yeah. and your overall brand. Oh yeah. I mean it's another touch point. Blogging is 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 it. It is the virtual magazine. It is and it doesn't have to be long. I know a lot of people I wasn't really into blogging. You know, mm-hmm. I'm still not a huge blogger. I am a reader, yes, and I definitely love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I have the podcast because that's what I love to right. do. Right. But I think that with blogging you have to have something that's relevant. Mm-hmm. And it's three hundred and fifty words, something quick, but giving people something every day to, to get another way of to feed into you because I don't care what your business is, you are that brand. Absolutely. Right. When you're a small business owner, you're what people are buying. Right. right. Exactly. Right. And it's free. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a free, free way right. to market. Yeah. Exactly. And so tell us about what you use um, in order to track whether or not people are actually looking at your blog. Oh, I use Google Analytics. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. And so that's what people do right. uh, in order to you can't you. What is the saying? Mm-hmm. Expect what you inspect. No, mm. inspect what, what you, you expect. expect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> exactly. so you inspect. You have to inspect Absolutely. what you're expecting in your business. And yeah. so Google Analytics is a way to do right. that. So for those of you who are thinking about blogging, yes. go ahead and get started. And Google Analytics is also free. And it's Amen. for everything, not <laughs> yes. just your blog. Absolutely. Like You need website. to know how many people are visiting that website. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge thing. I'm, and just to circle back to that, the reason why I added the blog is because I needed to get a lot of traffic to my website. Absolutely. That was important because I wanted Wanted to work with brands mm-hmm. and they that's one of the first thing they ask how many impressions or how many visitors unique visitors mm-hmm. I know these words probably sound crazy to people right. but you'll learn them very quickly right. you know how often are they coming how many how often are the same people who are already vested in you who are subscribers mm-hmm. how often are they coming back so if, if you write certain articles and your numbers peak then you know I need to write more articles like that or right. uh, yeah that kind exactly. of thing absolutely so, yeah. yeah so these are uh, again free tools that you can use for marketing yourself mm-hmm. so what are some other things that people can do who have a really small budget to market it market themselves get really comfortable with social media Mm -hmm. that is the best tool and and no matter which platform it's free Mm -hmm. you know I talk about that all the time I'm like we're in a different age and we are if you have a small business or any kind of business and you don't take care of so take advantage of social media you are missing a boat right Um, because you can advertise all day long for free yeah. 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 So let's talk a little bit about list building because mm-hmm. there are some free ways that you can build your list in your audience as well. So for those of you who have what you consider no list or a very small list, and I'm talking about email list, mm-hmm. uh, we know that the money is in the list a lot of times, <laughs> especially when we get ready to start yes. selling our products. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about how you've grown your email list. Uh, honestly, it was very organic mm-hmm. and it truly came from the events. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. I didn't set out. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't set out to create to get a big list. But once you throw one really good event, mm-hmm. um, then people are wondering, why didn't I know about it? Right. How can I find out? And mm-hmm. they'll ask you over your social media. And then yeah. you quickly lead them back to your web page and you tell them to subscribe. And that's how my list was built. Um, exactly. And I didn't, I didn't even realize the power of it at the time when it was being built. But, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. and, it, you know, it, it was really a bummer to me to not listen to some of the people who kept talking about the list. Mm-hmm. Even yes. my per- the person who was 
was building my website was talking about that. And so now I know the importance of a list. Oh, yeah. Well, we only have a few minutes left. And in those few minutes, let's talk a little bit about sponsorship. Okay. Because that's one of the things that you have just been slaying, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yes. So why is, tell us a couple of things. Why is sponsorship so important and how do you build those relationships in order, in order to garner funds? Uh, number one, it's important because when you attach your brand, especially mm -hmm. a small brand with a big brand, right. you get what I call your street cred. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what makes people say, wait a minute, I wasn't paying attention, let me pay attention now. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can't pay for that time type of advertisement, not Absolutely. on a small business budget, you just can't. Right, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's important to build those relationships because obviously influxes of money into your business always make you that much better of a mm -hmm. business person because you can breathe. Right. And when you partner and you bring something that those brands want to partner with and they v show value, it not only does it build your confidence uh, and let you know that you're on onto something, but it definitely builds your audience. Absolutely. And that's the name of the game. All of us want a nice size audience. We want to know that what we're doing people in, people appreciate and they are vested in. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's really important to align with brands. So who have some of your sponsors been thus far? Who I've worked with Apple, I've worked with Microsoft, SoulCycle, Kroger, uh, Sephora, mm, awesome. Kendra Scott. I yeah. love Kendra Scott. Yeah. They they believe in women, y'all. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I, I know I'm leaving somebody out. But yeah, those are some of them. <laughs> Didn't you just get one, though? I just worked with Glade this Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you know what? And that's what the place we want to be, where we yes. have so many people sponsoring that us that we can't even remember. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Well, where can we find you, Amira? Because, you know, we are um, closing out the show, and where can we find you? We know you, you have a podcast. Tell yeah. us your social media, everything. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can... Um, Follow me at brunchandslay.com, and on social media, I'm at Brunch and Slay. Real easy. The podcast is Brunch and Slay. Okay. So on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, anywhere you can yes. find a podcast, you can find it. So awesome. I keep it simple. So you also have something coming up, though, in regards to sponsorship. You oh, gave yeah. us a taste, but you have an actual class coming yeah. up, right? Yeah, Brunch and Slay is evolving every yes. day. Mm -hmm. And with our new website, we actually are offering classes, and not just by me, y'all. So <laughs> I wouldn't teach a class unless it's something I can actually offer something about. Right. But we have the first course, of course, since it's my site I'm launching, is how to get sponsorship. It's one-on-one. Right. -on -one. Yeah. Uh, it'll be ready next month. It'll Yay. be launching next month. Of course, I will definitely email and put it out everywhere like I do everything else. But it's definitely to answer all those questions that I get asked all the time. And it's giving you tools yeah. that no one gave me. Because right. that's that's basically people act like it's trade secrets, and it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So I've created something. I'm giving you templates. I'm giving you actual checklists. Mm -hmm. All the things you need to know to get the ball rolling. Well, okay. I can't awesome. wait to join. I'm yes. going to be in I'm that class, right? There. I will be there. So oh, it's downloadable. You oh, don't it's even downloadable? Have to yeah, it's yes. downloadable. Okay, okay forever, great. Yeah. So it's online, guys. <laughs> yes. So go to brunchandslay.com and get on the mailing list so that when it's time for it to drop, you'll be right there. Yes. So we want you to join us next week for the Business Breakfast Talk Show Absolutely. here at 7 a.m. And if you missed any part of our show, you can always visit Synergy Radio Network on Facebook and catch the replay. Breakfast has been served. Join us again next week and don't dine alone bring a friend and we'll see you next saturday all right thank you <laughs>